In this video, you're going to learn how to use a burette. Before watching this video, make sure that you've watched the meniscus, transfer pipette, and more pipette videos. This is a burette. As you can see, it looks very similar to a more pipette. Burettes are typically used for titrations and are used to transfer very accurate and precise volumes of liquid. Looking at the top of the burette, you'll notice the first graduation is zero just like with the more pipette, but as you move down, the volume increases. You'll notice near the bottom of the burette that the graduation stop. This is the same as a more pipette. The liquid should never go below this level. In order to determine the volume of liquid transferred in the burette, the difference between the final and initial volumes will be taken. At the bottom of the burette, there is a stopcock. This allows you to control the amount of liquid delivered. When it's horizontal, the burette is closed, but any variation from this flat angle causes liquid to leave the burette. The first thing to do before you start using your burette is to make sure you have the proper setup, just like I have here. You'll need a retort stand, a burette clamp, and your burette. You should make sure you always use the proper clamp or you can break the glassware. Next, you should make sure that there's no damage to any part of your burette. If there is, just tell your TA and get a new one. You'll now need to clean your burette. To do this, remove it from the clamp gently. Make sure that the stopcock is completely closed and add some deionized water to the top of the burette. This is very similar to cleaning a pipette. You'll want to hold the burette with two hands to make sure it doesn't break and gently rotate it, making sure the water covers the entire inner surface of the burette. Once you've done this, gently place it back on the clamp and place the waste beaker underneath the tip. You'll now want to drain most of the solution from the burette into the waste beaker. To do this, gently turn the stopcock. Don't drain all of the solution out. Leave a tiny bit in the bottom of the tip because this allows the prevention of bubbles. If you find that the stopcock is too difficult to turn, You can adjust it by turning the nut one direction or the other to loosen it or tighten it. Gently touch the tip of the burette to the side of the waste beaker to remove the last drop. You'll want to repeat this process two more times with the deionized water to thoroughly clean the burette. You'll now want to clean it three times with your solution. You have to do this a little differently because your solution is not in a squeeze bottle. So you want to lower your burette so that the top of it is at eye level. You don't want to pour any solutions above your head because this can be dangerous. It's okay that the tip of the burette hangs below the bench, just make sure to be careful not to break it. Place a funnel in the top of the burette, make sure you've cleaned it first. You can now pour a small amount of your solution into your burette. To do this and make sure that the funnel properly drains, it's important to raise it up a little bit to let air into the burette. You can now rinse your burette the same way you did with the deionized water. You'll now want to fill your burette with your solution. You'll do this the same way you did when rinsing it with the solution by lowering it over the edge of the bench. Now using the same funnel, fill your solution above the zero graduation mark. Make sure not to pour too quickly because you don't want to overflow your burette. This will cause solution to spill all over the floor. Once your burette is filled, raise it back to its original position and place the waste beaker under the tip. You'll now want to let a small amount of solution drain to prevent the formation of any bubbles. Leaving a small amount of solution in the burette, like I mentioned before, should have prevented any bubbles from forming, but always make sure to check before you begin. Lower the liquid level to below the zero line. It's important that your initial volume is below the zero mark because if it's above, you won't be able to get an accurate initial volume reading. When you're ready to go, remove your waste beaker Gently touch the tip to remove the last drop and replace it with your receiving vessel. Erlenmeyer flasks are typically used when using a burette. 
Adjust your burette to make sure that the tip of the burette is well below the rim of the flask. This prevents the loss of any solution when it's flowing out of the burette. You should position the burette so that the handle of the stopcock is on the same side as your dominant hand. To properly use the burette, you'll need to hold the stopcock with your non-dominant hand and the handle should be between your thumb and index finger with your palm around the back of the burette. This may feel uncomfortable at first, but it's proper technique and will feel more comfortable with practice. It provides support for the stopcock and it frees your dominant hand to swirl the receiving vessel while you're adding solution to it. Now that you're set up, record the initial volume in the burette. If you have difficulty reading the volume, then use the card shown to you in the meniscus video called the burette card. Burettes are extremely precise and the volume measurements should be made to one tenth of the smallest graduation. You can see here that the meniscus lies between the 0.8 and 0.9 graduation marks on the burette. Because the graduations do not get any smaller than this, the last digit is estimated. The volume in this burette can be read as 0.83 milliliters. Hold the flask with your dominant hand and begin to turn the stopcock with your non-dominant hand as demonstrated earlier. While swirling the flask, it's important to make sure that the tip of the burette is well above where the solution is. You don't want to submerge the tip. Once you've transferred all of the solution, return the stopcock to the horizontal position. You can now rinse down the sides of the flask to make sure that all of the drops of solution from your burette makes it into the bottom of the flask. Let the burette settle for a few seconds and then record the final volume. Taking the difference between the initial and the final volume will give you the volume transferred into your receiving vessel. Once you've finished using your burette, make sure to drain the remaining solution. Do this through the tip and not the top. Then you'll want to rinse it the same way as before, only rinsing it first three times with tap water, then three times with deionized water. For the most thorough clean, you can remove the stopcock. To do this, unscrew the blue nut, then remove the black and white plastic rings. To keep these safe, make sure to keep them in a clean dry beaker. You can now pull the stopcock from the other end. You can rinse the inside of where the stopcock was and also all of the pieces of the stopcock. To place it back in the burette, first insert the large plastic piece followed by the white plastic ring the black rubber ring, and finally the blue nut. Your burette has now been thoroughly cleaned and can be stored for later use. To store your burette, you'll want to make sure that the stopcock is completely vertical so that it's completely open, and you'll want to store it upside down. This prevents build buildup from forming in the stopcock, and it also allows all of the water to drain. Using a burette is something that's very common in all forms of chemistry. It can be daunting at first, but with a lot of practice, you can master it.